Well, who are our modern day heroes? We think the real heroes are everyday people who take risks and move forward with the unknown so that they and those who follow might benefit from the outcome. And some of these heroes are cancer patients who participate in clinical trials. They take risks every single day just to survive. Our heroes also include the researchers who work tirelessly to find the breakthroughs that'll make it possible for cancer patients to survive. So as part of our series, Fighting Cancer Now, we've invited three of my personal heroes to be with us this morning. We've got Lynette Visconti, president of the Gateway for Cancer Research, Tiffany Hegel, a cancer patient and now survivor <laughs> who tried a new combination therapy to treat her cancer. And we're also welcoming to the show this morning, Dr. Edward Lynn from the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center at the University of Washington. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Lynette, I do want to begin with you this morning because I want to know a little bit more about the research that the Gateway funds and why you decided to fund this particular trial. Well, the Gateway for Cancer Research funds cancer research all over the world at leading institutions that answers one of three questions or all of the questions. Does it help a cancer patient feel better, live longer, or be cured today? And at Gateway, when you donate to us, 99 cents of every dollar that we receive goes directly to cancer research. Mm -hmm. The reason that we liked Dr. Lin's study so much is because Dr. Lin thought outside the box, he paid attention to what his patients were telling him and what they needed, and he designed a clinical trial that is helping Tiffany feel mm -hmm. better and live longer. You know, Tiffany, I, I'm so taken with you because you've been smiling and so <laughs> up and just happy, you know, which I think is wonderful, especially given what you've gone through. I do want to know a little bit about your experience. Tell us about your diagnosis. It was colon cancer, It was right? colon cancer at 33, which was young with absolutely no family history of any kind. Uh, had a three-year-old, a six-year-old at home. Uh, had three surgeries. I've had, I had three occurrences of that. Um, and at the third time, after having gone through all the therapies that kind of were the standards at sure. the time, mm -hmm. my local oncologist decided that it was time for a trip to MD Anderson to see what was going on that we didn't know about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's how I ended up as a patient of Dr. Lin's. Um, and then he tried this therapy out mm -hmm. on me mm -hmm. and, and I have done very well on it. And that's been 12 years ago I was originally diagnosed. Well, that's what I find so fascinating. And I wanna bring you here uh, in on this now, Dr. Lin, because you noticed something that you thought might help, did you not? What, what, what does it mean uh, to you that your doctor said, I'm gonna try something. I am, as you said, I'm gonna think outside the box mm -hmm. and it appears to have saved your life. It has, I believe that it has. You know, I started with a three and a six year old and now have an 18 year old in college and a 15 year old. So Dr. Lynn's research has allowed me to be there, you know, to watch oh, my kids grow yeah. up, to live my marriage and my life. And you know, had he not had this study, I was stage three when diagnosed, you know, wow. and had been through everything that existed. Dr. Lynn, when you hear something like that, and you think about the research that you did and, and, and the new therapies that you use for metastatic colorectal cancer, and certainly you see what appears to be a success story here. Talk to me a little bit about that. When Tiffany first came to me, we were out of the quote-unquote conventional options, mm -hmm. especially judging back that she had failed two surgeries at the same nodal sites, which in general, the five-year survival uh, in that group is a zero, uh, according oh, to historical boy. literatures. <laughs> And so we, I told Tiffany at that time, I said, look, uh, this is something uh, at the time is still in a very infancy stage mm -hmm. um, and uh, is sort of a, somewhat of uncharted territory as far as just how we would approach a cancer in that, in that condition. And now she's in remission. Obviously the trial has not yet opened, mm -hmm. but the learning from the patients like Tiffany and many others, uh, we built into this uh, phase two study. Mm -hmm. So Clinical trials then mean hope, do mm. they not? Yes, yeah. they do. You know, it's interesting, and I was sharing this with you all. Sometimes when I go to the doctor, I think, oh boy, he doesn't know what I'm going through. He has no idea. And, and then I read uh -huh. that y you have a personal connection to cancer, and then you told your kids something important. Would you mind sharing that with us this morning? Yeah, um, you know, my dad has also had colorectal he cancer did. Yeah, when he's uh, in their, his 70s. And he went through a very horrendous chemotherapy, almost died mm -hmm. uh, from the chemotherapy treatment. And so I made it a personal mission when I went through my residency and fellowship and sort of picked the GI cancer as my field of uh, research focus. Thank you all so much for coming by and sharing this information with us this morning. Good to meet you, Dr. Lin. Thank you. And good to see you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And clearly, with a serious illness like cancer, it's important to know all of your treatment options. If you want more information about the latest cancer research, simply go to the website demandcures.org. 
And next on our series, we'll tell you some exciting ways you can become personally involved in the fight against cancer.